What a football game. <laughs> what a game. That's why you play until the last second runs off the clock. So proud of uh, our team and their fight, our staff, <clears throat> the chemistry and the resolve of this team and the mental toughness, uh, the next man up. I mean, we're down seven starters now on defense <clears throat> and uh, had the flu run through our team this week. We had guys that didn't practice all week. Um, and then to be able to win like that, I mean, just says so much about these young men. Uh, I want to thank our crowd and our students. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving break, coming back. I love you. Uh, our students are just amazing. That was a special night. You get, you guys were incredible. And uh, thank you for that. Our, our seniors deserve that. And you guys delivered. <clears throat> Devin Leary, you know, just continues to make clutch plays and Pretty cool to see him break Philip Rivers' record. Uh, Philip's such a great player. And, and, you know, Devin just thanked his entire team down in the locker room, thanked his old line, everybody, defense, offense. He's a selfless player. You know, you got to tip your hat to, to Sam Howell. <clears throat> that guy's a warrior for them. You know, I, I th he played really hard. He's a great football player. He's going to have a great career. Uh, that was a hard fought game by two teams and we found a way to win it. You know, it's, I don't know what was left on the clock there at the end when we needed two scores and we found a way to get them and pretty awesome that it was a Mecca <laughs> to make that play. Um, pretty awesome that it was him on senior day, a uh, guy that comes back to have a special season and great way to cap it off. You know, so many things that uh, that game meant. You know, not just beating our rival, but being undefeated at home. That's a legacy thing for our players. And 35 years since that's been done, um, getting that ninth win now, a chance to win 10 or more, pending the game tomorrow. Um, chance to finish higher in the rankings and put ourselves in great position for an excellent bowl game berth. So all those things, you know, uh, it was an awesome game. Proud of our guys. Questions? <clears throat> Go ahead, Jonas. Coach, all year you talk about you guys need some balls to bounce your way when um, <laughs> you guys recovered that, that onside kick. Did you think to yourself, hey, this is things are finally going our way in the biggest game of the year last year where we actually we really, really needed the most? Well, yeah, we needed that one because, you know, I mean, we blocked the second punt there and it bounced back. To, I mean, you ever seen someone block a punt and someone else get a first down out of it? Like, like the opposite of getting bounces our way, Jonas, there. Uh, so, yeah, that was – we were due that play. <laughs> thank thank God we got it because uh, we certainly didn't get a whole lot of breaks. You know, we get a sack, force fumble by Daniel, and the tackle that he beats is standing there to watch him sack him and recovers a, a fumble there. So, yeah, uh, we were due for a break there on an onside kick and well executed. I thought our special teams were fantastic today, you know. I mean, we blocked two punts, had several good returns in the game, and uh, obviously the huge onside kick. Go ahead, James. Yeah, Dave, did you um, – did you – was you went with a different type of onside kick there. Was that just something you maybe saw from them uh, versus the one you ran at Wake Forest or – No, it's uh, – <clears throat> it's a numbers deal. You know, we line up in three pods and look at the count and – they left two guys in the middle, and we've got two guys to block them plus the kicker to recover it. So <clears throat> we're just trying to play a math game. The percentages of getting an onside kick are very low to begin with, so you're just trying to use the numbers in your favor as best you can. And just to follow up, once you recover that, you've seen Devin in those situations before, final drive situations. Did you have some confidence there, obviously, that he could go down and get it done? Yeah, I, I did. And, you know, Tim asked me, do you want us to – run the ball a little bit. I said, no, Devin's hot. Let's just go score. And uh, I didn't want to put it, you know, on the kicker and risk whatever could happen there, you know. So we were going to be aggressive and take it down the field. And the way Devin plays in the fourth quarter in clutch situations, we knew something good was going to happen. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah, Dave, you touched on this already, but for Mecca and Mezzi, who, you know, obviously came back this year and has just done so much for this program, for him to have not one but two big catches down there, I mean, how much does that mean for him but also just for this whole team to see him 
be rewarded like that on senior day. Yeah, I mean, it's special. Um, pretty emotional seniors down in that locker room right now, <laughs> him being one of them. And it's good karma, man. It's just good karma. Good things happen to good people. And he's one of these young men that's just special and very, very happy for him and, and the team. Go ahead, Andrew. Dave, speaking of uh, players that have been through a lot for your program, how happy were you to see C.J. Riley get that blocked punt touchdown in the first quarter with everything that he's been through in his career? Yeah, I didn't know that was him that recovered it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell with the scrum down there. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, love it. Guy in his sixth year to come back, Jordan Houston blocked the punt. I did see that. Um, pretty cool, you know, to see your tail back going in there and block a punt and then a receiver recover it. I mean, that says a lot about just kind of the team itself. You know, when you look at what's going on on special teams, there's a lot of guys selling out for us right now. Go ahead, Brett. Yeah, Dave, you don't win this game if you don't hold them to a field goal there um, with about two minutes to go. They had the ball first and goal at the four. Did you kind of address that defensive stand, especially the way your defense has got kind of beat up during the second half here before? Yeah. Well, you know what? I'd like to go play someone that has seven defensive starters up. You know, I'd like to go play that defense. So to say that our guys are beat up, it's a mass unit. And they're tough. And they just keep fighting and scrapping and finding ways to make plays. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, you have a rotation on defense for a reason. We don't have much of a rotation anymore. We just don't have that luxury. So the guys just dug deep and found a way to stop them. You know, with Ding there, took that screen to the house. I mean, that was so close to interception there on third down with Jakeen. But uh, it's a great stop. I mean, we needed it. Go ahead, Jonas. Coach, I have you guys um, watch film and put this one to bed and enjoy it throughout the night. Do you and the staff be on a charter tomorrow and, and fly to D.C. and sit in the student section and, and root for them <laughs> to pull this thing off? Yeah, I mean, I, I gave everybody tomorrow off. We're going to – we need to get away from here for a day. It's 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 been a lot, 10 night games and a uh, short week. But, yeah, we'll all be posted up somewhere watching B.C. and Wake and – Obviously, we're we're Boston College Eagles fans tomorrow, and hoping for something good to happen, you know, to allow us to go play in Charlotte, and that's what we're going to be doing. All right, last question for Coach from Josh. On that note, um, after the Clemson game earlier this year, you said that the curse was broken, that you finally were able to break through there. Now that you've taken care of business in this game, and you have a chance to get to Charlotte. If it were to happen, what would the championship game for your group mean to you? Mm. Well, I, I don't know if I can put that into words for you right now. You know, maybe ask me that again in my press conference. Um, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> that was a hell of a football game right there. I just want to go enjoy the win with my family and uh, Wolfpack fans have a hell of a night. We definitely made uh, it great to be in red and uh, don't have to listen to all those people in blue talk for another year. So it's a good night for us. Let's just enjoy that. We can talk about the ACC later. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations on the all right. win. Have a good night. All right, guys. Corey Durden's here if you want to start raising your hands for questions for him. Go ahead, David. Yeah, Corey, can you just kind of talk about the energy and excitement, uh, what it was like on the sideline for the last couple, two minutes, just being part of that that comeback? Uh, the energy is amazing. I mean, it's just just to have a group of guys like this who just believe until the last second, it's honestly amazing. Because, you know, just even two minutes when they still had the ball, like we knew we were going to win. Like we knew the offense was going to get the ball back. We were going to win. We just knew how the onside kick was going to go. And it was just, it was amazing just seeing guys have faith and never lose faith at any point in the game is honestly amazing to me, especially because, I mean, with a minute and 30 seconds left, no timeouts. I mean, most people would think that a game is over, but my teammates didn't do that. Go ahead, Mike. 
Hey, Corey, obviously UNC, you know, has gotten the better of state the last few years. Can you kind of just put into words and tell us what it means not only just to beat them, but to go out here in your final game here at Carter Finley, kind of the way that you did just now? Um, it, honestly, it feels amazing. Um, this is an amazing feeling just to beat a team like that. I mean, Sam Howell, he's a great player. It's no surprise just to, to beat an NFL quarterback like that. It, it always just feels great. And so just, you know, just we're going to enjoy this win. I mean, the goal is ACC championship, so we're going to be Boston College fans tomorrow. Go ahead, James. Corey, um, they obviously have more success with the run game than the pass game tonight. Did you guys have some confidence on that final drive, knowing that they likely were going to have to score throwing the football? They really hadn't done that much all night. Yes, um, we had a lot of confidence. Um, it's no doubt, it's no surprise Sam Howell's a good player, but we wanted him to beat us with his arm. He hadn't beat us with his arm the whole game, and we have been beating up on him, and we wanted him to drop back and beat us with his arm, and he couldn't do it, and y'all seen it at the end. All right, last question for Corey from Brett. Yeah, Corey, they had the ball first and goal from the four there, and you ended up holding them to the field goal that kind of set the whole thing up to win the game. What were you guys talking about there on the field in that situation? And what did you guys do to keep them out of the end zone and make them kick the field goal? Um, just, I mean, the whole drive, we was just, you know, just the whole drive, that drive was just, it was a sporadic drive. It was all over the place. We had penalties. We had that tip ball that I think the tight end caught on like the four or five yard line. So, you know, we had a lot of just sporadic stuff happen. And just we, our biggest thing was just to stay together. Like if we kept them out of the box, because every play that they got, they didn't earn. They got a penalty, they got that that tip ball, and then it was something else that happened on that drive. So just the mindset was make them earn it. We didn't, they drove down the field, we didn't make them earn anything. And then when they got on the four yard line, we made them earn it. They didn't get in that ball, we made them earn it. And that them taking three instead of a touchdown equals us winning. I mean, little stuff like that equals wins. Thanks, Corey. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. You go fast. All right, guys. Uh, Ameka Mezzi is here now. If you want to go ahead and raise your hand for questions for him. Go ahead, David. So, Ameka, your final catch at Carter Finish Stadium is going to be that touchdown to win this game. Has that sunk in to you at all? And, and can you kind of describe what that's like? Honestly, no. Like, bro, what even just happened, honestly? Like, <laughs> like we were down with the one, like, two minutes left. And I don't know, I just seen in, like, the crowd. And my head was down, but I seen the crowd, so many shirts that don't ever give up. I just started praying, you know, with Jimmy V, and I just started praying. And then just things just went our way. It was crazy. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah, Mecca, you obviously, you know, decided to come back this year. You, you wanted to be here with this team to kind of end the regular season undefeated at home in a game like this where, where you get two touchdown catches against your rival. Just yeah. how much yeah. does that mean to you to be able to kind of finish the regular season portion like that? Oh, um, yeah. Honestly, it doesn't feel real. <clears throat> um, I just really just thank God. Like, really, like, you can't script that up. You can't vision that. Man, that's that's a blessing right there. I, I, I got to thank God, really. Okay, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, can you kind of just go through the two touchdown catches if you saw it, how they unfolded for you and how it came about? Yeah, uh, the first one. They clouded the coverage, the safety had taken there. So I started running down the uh, sideline. I was just hoping Devin would see me and he just launched it up and I was wide open. So it was a touchdown. <clears throat> and then the second one, we had a different play call, man. And Devin just believes in me and uh, I believe in him. And he just checked me to a go ball and then he threw it up and then and came down with it. So thank God, really. Go ahead, Andrew. Mecca, that connection between you and Devin for the touchdowns is something that we've seen of a lot with, with the two of you together here at NC State. And I know you guys have great chemistry on and off the field. What does it mean to you to have caught the two touchdowns that allowed Devin to break Phillip Rivers' school record for all-time passing touchdowns? It's just, it's just meaningful. Um, <clears throat> like 
during the COVID year, uh, we spent like two weeks straight. We had to both be out like through contract trades or something like that. And we we spent like two weeks straight just running routes with each other, man. And uh, my sophomore year, I would run routes every single, like after every game in the indoor with him. Um, man, we just spent so much time with each other. And I remember after the uh, 2019 season, we were in the indoor almost every other day, like really. So, I mean, we kind of just spoke that to existence with each other. Like the season that he's having, <laughs> the season we're having, like it's not really like a surprise. Like I'm not really surprised he's doing this. He's always had this in him, you know, and it's just what we do really like at, at the end of the day, I feel like. Go ahead, Brett. Mecca, given the, the situation, how how surprised were you to, to see yourself that wide open on the, on the first touchdown? Yeah, I got a – I don't know why they leave me wide open, but, I mean, we'll take a touchdown any day. So, uh, I wasn't surprised, though. <clears throat> they kept trying to play uh, cover two, try to cloud the covers every single time on first down, you know, and the safety – like, I think they just ran, like, a little bender, so the safety a bit on it. And, you know, you just can't – I feel like when you just keep running the zone, like, there's going to be a miscommunication at some point in the game. So, you know, it just happened to happen at the, like, later part of the game. So. You know. Last question for Emeka uh, from James. Yes, Emeka, I just wanted to add to that. I think that might have been the first true vertical ball you guys threw that game. Was that something they were doing defensively? I mean, just not timing it up? What kind of led to that? It's what they're doing defensively. And honestly, like, we in those type of uh, looks, <clears throat> we usually don't throw it. Like, it's just they're, they're like, trying to stop the – deep ball really they're trying to make us throw underneath but I mean just Devin just gave me a chance and sometimes as a receiver that's all you ask for and just he believes in me and that's all that matters at the end of the day so they were just trying to they weren't really playing man to man so I mean this kind of we're stopping the deep balls really so thanks for joining us Emeka appreciate you all right guys Devin Leary's here now if you want to raise raise your hand for questions for Devin Go ahead, Andrew. Devin, I just asked the Mecca the same question, but um, obviously the two of you have had a great connection on and off the field and your time with him here and have meant a lot to each other. How fitting does it feel for you for him to catch the two touchdowns that move you past Phillip Rivers for the all-time single season school record? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, it's, it's a blessing too. Um, I mean, it's crazy just to think how far we came as a program, how far I've come myself as a quarterback, as a player and a leader of this team. You know, being able to have a receiver and a teammate and a friend like Emeka just helps me become that much better. I mean, the dude works his butt off. I mean, the, the most I've ever seen in my life. And for him to be a part of this and for him to be contributing to this season the entire year is just a huge honor. Go ahead, Jonas. Hey, Devin, um, Coach Dorn has talked about all season how you guys, well, the last couple of weeks, how you guys get some balls to bounce away, how you catch some breaks. Uh, at Wake Forest, you guys didn't get the onside kick. You, you felt like, of course, you the guy that you would have won the game. When you guys recovered it, when Chris recovered the onside kick for you guys, what was going through your mind? Were you thinking, like, this is the redemption we needed from that game? And something finally went our way, we, we can finish it off. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, just to think, like, we were in a very similar situation not too long ago, and things didn't really go our way. And then, you know, as soon as we recover the kick, I knew we were going to score. I knew we were going to get the ball in the end zone somehow, some way. And, you know, it just – football kind of works out that way sometimes, and I'm glad it was in our favor. Go ahead, Brett. I'll ask you the same question I asked uh, Emeka. How surprised were you to see him that wide open, given the circumstances there at the end? Of the yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised, honestly. I mean, they, they did a good job of, you know, knowing where Emeka was each and every play. Um, kind of being able to cloud towards his side, uh, being able to trap towards his side. And, you know, it was almost just like a busted coverage. I mean, went through my progression, saw Mecca was wide open, gave him a shot and let him did the rest. Go ahead, David. Does this top what happened against Clemson just as far as craziness goes, as far as, you know, things that you'll kind of remember when you look back at, at your career? Yeah, I mean, I think they're both pretty crazy. 
I mean, both, both games is like coming down to the wire. You know, we, we got to make a play and we do. I mean, it, it's very similar. It's very weird how the game works out like that sometimes. But, you know, knocking off a number nine team early in the season is something you'll always remember. And then year in and year out, anytime you beat UNC as a rival, you're always going to remember it. So, I mean, they, they pretty much go hand in hand for me. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Devin, congrats on the win, man. Um, you touched on it a little bit. I was wondering if you can just take us through some of your emotions and what's going on in your mind when you see Christopher recover the onside kick and then going onto the field knowing that you'll have a chance to, to take the lead with just over a minute to go. Can you take us through kind of what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, we knew we needed to get the onside kick to have a chance to win. And as soon as we recovered it, you know, the first thing all my teammates are looking at me, all the guys on defense looking at me, offense saying, let's go, let's go win this thing. And, you know, as the quarterback of this team, as a leader of this team, you, you got to put your best, fe- best foot forward. And that's what we did. Um, I mean, my emotions, I like to stay level throughout the entire game until the time runs out. And that's kind of how I've been. And I knew as soon as we recovered the ball that we were going to go down and score. All right, last question for Devin from James. Yeah, Devin, I think Coach uh, Doran mentioned that once you got in, inside the uh, field goal range on that last drive, you could have ran it, but he decided to throw with you. Was that your first read to throw to, to a Mech, or was that something you just were specifically looking for? Yeah, that, that was one of my reads. Um, you know, based off the coverage, based off the matchup, we were just basically taking a shot. We knew a Mecca. Um, you know, he does a great job of locating the ball. As soon as I saw the opening, just gave him a shot. He made a great play. Thanks for taking the time, Dev. Thank you. All right, guys, last NC State player, Levi Jones, joining us now. Dang, D. Larry Stang. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry for that. Uh, congratulations on the win. Um, pretty simple. Can you just tell us uh, your emotions and what it feels like to not only you know beat UNC, but to do it here at home and to close out you know your season here at your home field in the way that you did with that win? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was it was very huge. You know, it was my first time uh, beating them since I've been enrolled at NC State. You know, so. Just, you know, always beating a rival rival is, is a huge win, you know, and just how it came down to the wire, you know, how it took all sides of the ball, you know, just made it even better, so. Mike again. All right, um, and, and also obviously that last, um, when you guys held them to a field goal, um, what's some of the talk there? You know, they got down inside the 10 and, and you guys were able to defend the pass and the run pretty well. well can you take us through some of that process where they had been able to score on you, but you guys held them to just that field goal? You know, how big was that? Um, just having that mentality of bending, not break, you know, defense bend, don't break. So we just, you know, staying persistent, you know, d- doing what we're supposed to do, doing what we're coached to do, playing the calls and executing. So just only giving away three points at that drive is almost a win for the defense, you know? So that's just, kind of the mentality we have, you know, no one ever gets down on each other, you know, someone might make a mistake. We were there to pick him up, you know? So you feel me? That's where, that's where our, our, our mindset was. And that's how, you know, we approach things. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah. Coach Doran's talked a lot this year in the last couple of weeks about how important it was for you guys and how it was a goal to go undefeated at home, just for you guys as a team, how much is that, mean to finish that out and kind of cement your legacy that way yeah very huge you know it's something that hasn't been done here in a while at nc state so just you know having our name in in that line of history is is very important to us you know and that's what we've been working for you know just uh, turning stuff around you know uh making big things happen so that's where we feel about it go ahead jonas Vi, was it was there any point in the fourth quarter, you know, UNC had a lot of momentum. Like, was there any point where their players were kind of carrying themselves like game was over with celebrating too soon? How's it going to come back and actually secure the victory? I mean, I know the the mentality and some of the things that I was hearing from some of the people on our sideline, whether they're players or whether they're, you know, uh, part of the staff, like 
I didn't hear anyone giving up. You know, I heard everyone saying like, we're still in this, the game's not over. There's still two minutes on the clock. There's still 3.04 on the clock or whatever it was, you know? So, you know, just coming off the field to the sideline and hearing that, you know, hearing everyone's uh, just, there's their, their uplifting spirit, you know, that, that really, really helps a lot. It brings a lot of energy, you know, to the defense, you know, so. All right, that looks like it's it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all. All right, that's the end of the press conference for NC State. Thanks, Craig.